I've got to be honest with you, this is the bike I've been waiting to build. In this box right here is the TMS Street Trial Silex V4. It's a 24 inch steel Street Trials bike and I'm so excited to test this out. I've ridden all kinds of inspired bikes and extensions and every other bike brand that you can think of, but I've never ridden the TMS and I can't tell you how excited I am to try it out. This is another rider owned brand. It's made by Trials Riders for Trials Riders and Tivo is one of my favorite riders of all time. So to be riding the bike that carries his namesake is pretty sweet. The riders I've seen riding these bikes have absolutely been throwing down. So hopefully once I get on the bike, I can do the same. But all that talk aside, let's get started. I can't overstate how excited I am to unbox this bike. The other interesting bit, besides the frame that obviously was designed by TMS, there's a lot of parts in this bike that are actually made by TMS as well. So they've had a design in almost every single bit on the bike. Okay, the first thing to come out are the wheels, and these are TMS specific rims and hubs. I wasn't kidding. They made a lot of the parts that are on this bike. This takes a lot more effort from a design standpoint to actually create all the pieces. It would have been way easier for TMS to be like, yeah, we'll take that one from Trial Tech and we'll take that piece over there. Way easier to just pick the specs out of what already existed. The fact that they started from the ground up and built this bike is really impressive and I think we're gonna notice it when we start to ride. One thing I should probably mention is that this bike and the other bikes in the Steel Bike Showdown are coming from a shop in the States called Trial Superstore. They carry pretty much all the Trials bikes that you'd want and they've hooked me up with quite a few bikes to test for this channel. So go check out trialsuperstore.com if you get a chance. Okay, now the big reveal. Right away, one thing that really stands out to me is that they already threaded the brake through the steerer tube and through the stem. This is one of the biggest things that drives me crazy when I first get any other Street Trials bike is that I have to unhook the hose from the front brake to get the ball rolling. And the fact that they did it for me already, huge bonus. Thanks guys. The only bit about that that's sort of stressing me out is that this gets a little bit kinked when you're shipping it. So before we even put this in the stand or unpack anything, I'm just gonna slide all this stuff from the stem onto the bike. That way we don't risk any damage with the line here. Now that we've got that one bit taken care of, let's take all the packing off and see what this bike is gonna look like. And then we'll get it in the stand and dial it in. I've gotta say this is the fastest unboxing I think I've ever done. And it's because they did a lot of the work for us already at the factory. The fact that the front brake is already threaded through the steerer tube is a huge deal, especially when you're getting your first street trials bike and you're not that confident working on hydraulic lines. The last thing you wanna do is unhook this, run it through the steerer tube and rehook it. The fact that they took care of that for you right out of the gate is a huge bonus. Now, this is my first time ever seeing a TMS bike in person and this bike looks fantastic. I wanna give you some close-ups on some of the bits here, but the way that this bike came together, it's called a clear black, which is basically a raw finish. So you can actually see all of the welds that they put on the bike. You get the direct look at how much effort went into this bike and how clean all these welds are. It's a really impressive look. And also one of their team riders did a little art graphic down here toward the bottom bracket, which looks really good. Every single element on this bike is so tidy and I'm so anxious to get the bike together so we can actually go out and ride it. Come around to the front real quick. I wanna show you something. So you know this is making me happy. This bike came with a high rise bar on it. This particular TMS bar is 108 millimeter rise. I normally recommend between an 80 and 110 mil rise on your handlebars for a street trials bike to get the most out of it. What's interesting is that this bike also has the shortest stem that I've ever ridden on a Street Trials bike. My guess is that once I get on this bike, it's gonna have way more of a BMX style feel than all of my other Street Trials bikes. And I'm curious to see what that feels like. Let's get this bike in the stand and get it all dialed in. Like I said, the TMS factory already took care of everything for you. All you really have to do is put the wheels on and the pedals and you can go out and ride it, which is great because I'm not sure if you can tell, but I'm kind of frothing to ride this bike. But before I put this wheel on, let's give this TMS hub a listen. Have a look at the back end of this bike and you're gonna notice one thing that really stands out. It's these horizontal dropouts. Most aluminum bikes have a vertical dropout and then they have a chain tensioner under the chain stay to keep everything tight and in place. A steel trials bike is a little bit different with this horizontal dropout, which is a lot closer to a BMX style. And they run very similar setups when it comes to adjusting and putting the wheel into place. It looks like this. So this is a bolt that runs into the hub and then this piece back here 
goes on the back of the dropout and you tighten this bolt here to tighten the chain and also to straighten the wheel to make sure that it's just right. So this piece right here is what's keeping your chain tight and your wheel locked into place. Let me show you how it goes. There's a little bit of back and forth to getting this whole thing right, but here's my process. First, I like to snug these two axle bolts into the rear hub to get the wheel in place while making sure that my chain tensioner is at the back of the dropout like this. I'll get these snug to make sure that the wheel is where it needs to be, and then I'll work with the chain tensioner to get the wheel to pull the chain tight exactly how I want it to be. And when I get there, then I go back to the hub and lock it into place then you should be good to go. I talked a fair bit about how TMS made a bunch of their parts, and one thing I want to call out specifically is the free hub that we have here on the back wheel. So one of the main differentiating factors between the different levels of complete bikes that you can get is that a lot of them will do free wheels where it just threads onto the hub, and then the top end ones will have free hubs where it's actually part of the hub, and you get really strong engagement, really high quality, and this bike comes with a free hub that's actually designed by TMS. This bike was more or less pre-built when it came from the factory, but there's one thing that we still have to add, and those are the pedals that come with it. These are made by a brand called Ice, which I've never heard before, but they look real nice. These are like a uh, oil slick kind of pattern, so they kind of change colors as you look at them, and they're super light. This ought to be a fun one. Definitely got some pins on them too, so we may be running shin guards on our first couple rides. Before we take this bike out of the stand, there's two things that I need to do, and I think some of you are gonna really like the first one. I finally got my hands on a torque wrench. We're gonna tighten all the bolts on this bike to spec to make sure there is no surprises on that first ride. If you've never heard of a torque wrench, it's really kind of clever. It's something that prevents you from under or over tightening a bolt on your bike. Most manufacturers will actually tell you exactly how tight to tighten bolts to make sure that it meets their spec. You don't want to over tighten a bolt because it can then break. If you under tighten a bolt, then everything's going to come loose. The one thing that torque wrenches are sometimes confused with are Torx wrenches, T-O-R-X. And that's a special configuration here. You would use these actually for the bolts on the Magura brakes here or on your disc brake rotor. This is what you'd use for that. Torx, torque. So we're going to use the torque wrench here to go over the stem, the bars, all the bolts on the bike to make sure that everything is done right. So on this particular bike, I need to go to 8.8 .8 from what I could find on the internet. It's going to make a little beep at us when we know we got it right. We got it. It's kind of cool, right? It just gives you a little note to make sure that you definitely got it right. So we're all set here with this stem. We shouldn't have any problems now that we did everything according to spec. The next thing I've got is a bike scale. We're gonna weigh this bike and figure out exactly how much it weighs right out of the box. And now the real moment of truth. Here's another interesting bit about the front end of this bike. They chose to go with these really thin grips. In fact, they remind me of the Soyo grips that you used to be able to get in the early 2000s from Japan. They're paper thin, and actually I might try to steal these and put them on my competition trials bikes. I'm actually kind of surprised that they didn't go with a lock-on grip here, something a little bit thicker, especially because you're riding street and there's a lot more impact and stuff like that. But I'm not mad at these grips at all, and I'm curious to see, maybe there's something I haven't considered running a thinner grip on my street trials bike. When I first started rolling around this bike out of the box, I thought, oh man, they forgot to shorten the hose. But then I realized it's meant to be wrapped like this so you can do an extra bar spin or tail whip and not have to worry about having the hose too short or get kinked or anything like that. It's another clever thing that they did at the factory to think ahead to how you're gonna be riding this bike. Normally at this point in the video, I'm telling you to click over here and wait until next week to see me ride this bike, but I can't wait and I doubt you can either. So I'm gonna give this thing a quick test ride. We'll do the complete full ride at some point, but I gotta know right now what this bike rides like. So I'm gonna take it outside right now and we're gonna give it a quick test.
We're back from our first ride on this bike. It was a quick one, but I adjusted really fast to this bike and the geometry that's here. You know, the hex that I normally ride is kind of this midpoint between more of a trial style and a street trial style, where this bike is 100% street trials. So it's really confident on bunny hops, it manuals well, it does all the things that you would really wanna do if you were just riding street. I don't think I would ever take this to a pile of rocks or anything like that, but we'll see. So all three of the bikes we're testing are gonna have similar geometry. This one was a great one to start with, and I'm excited to get a proper first ride on this and build up the other two bikes in the Steel Showdown. If you're new to street trials riding or even trials riding in general, I made a playlist for you right here that's gonna give you all the fundamentals to get you rolling. Even if you have been riding for a while, there might be something in there that you haven't picked up yet, so take a look. And this is the first bike that we've built for the Steel Bike Showdown. So as we make our way through all the different bikes, I'm gonna put a playlist right here that's gonna give you all the unboxings, first rides, and the showdown itself. Stay tuned for that.